Hi everybody, Dan Ullman here taking a look at the Friday race of the day. It's race number nine at Oak Lawn Park, an optional claiming race at three quarters of a mile. Before we begin with the analysis, I do want to remind everybody, try out those new DRF mobile pass performances. You get true mobile interactive access on your phone anywhere, anytime. Downloads are fast, plus you get the exclusive lifetime buyer speed figure graph and lots, lots more. Learn more at drf.com slash MPPS. Let's meet the field for Friday's race of the day. And remember, you can download free formulator pass performances for this race on the race of the day event page at drf.com. Access them and handicap along with me. The pace is expected to be solid and fast, according to Timeform US's pace projector. The seven lullaby bling is expected to make the lead. Lullaby bling, though, was eased in his most recent start, so perhaps he's only going to be a minor pace presence in here. More interesting, perhaps, is the number five volatile who should be close to the lead the one strike that has tactical speed but because of his inside post he probably has to run and gun a bit Pete's play call has also shown some speed those four horses figure to be uh, battling it out in the early portion of this race and the pace should be solid let's start things off with the number one strike that and we'll take a look at strike that's most recent victory he has won three of four lifetime starts this was against a weaker group of non-winners of three life allowance horses but I like the way Strike That won this race. He got right up close to the pace. He puts away his primary pace pursuer turning into the lane, and he draws away to win with the career best 92 buyer. He has a lot of upside potential. This is a tougher spot, but he goes out for trainer Robertino Diodoro, and we have a formulator effect for that barn over the past three years. Horses aged three and up, last out winners in optional claiming dirt sprints at Oaklawn, six for 14, a $2.94 return turn on investment strike that again has that tactical speed i think he's going to work out another good trip three to one on the morning line for a very logical contender the number two is pete's pay call and pete's play call has won 10 times in his career and we'll go back to his most recent effort on april the second this race was against straight forty thousand dollar claimers he got a really nice trip and ride by martin garcia there was not a lot of pace on and pete's play call got close to those moderate splits and he sprinted it on home to win as the favorite. He is a rock solid horse. He's seven to two on the morning line, but he is taking a little bit of a step up in class as well. And the pace, as you saw from the projector, expected to be hotter than it was last time out. Pete's play call goes out for the dangerous Michael Maker Barn. He's yet another in a long line of Maker claims that have been turned into stakes winners. And you can upgrade this horse if the track comes up wet. He has won four of seven times over wet going. The number three in here is strolling, and I think strolling is a little bit dirtied up and a little bit interesting in case the pace is fast up front. It was a tale of two pace scenarios in his last two races. Two starts back against condition claimers. There was a fast and contested pace up front. Strolling rolled him down in the stretch. Last time out, he didn't have a lot of pace to attack. He came from 10 lengths off of the pace, and I thought he ran quite well to only be beaten two and three quarter lengths in a third place finish. He's going to get the right pace set up in this spot. Strolling is the kind of horse I believe that you can use on the bottom of single race exotics at the very least. The number four is Midnight Swamp. Midnight Swamp's most recent start came back on Valentine's Day over the Tapita surface at Golden Gate Fields, and he faced a good field. The winner of that race returning to finish second and now winners of two other then with a 93 buyer speed figure. Midnight Swamp was then entered at Santa Anita on February the 28th. He was listed as a vet scratch that day, and we have not seen him for a while. He is working regularly for Keith DeZormo, but his two dirt races to date, and yes, they were in the beginning of his career. They were not very good. Perhaps he is simply better as a turf and synthetic horse, and he might want a little bit more distance to boot. The number five volatile is a strong contender for the Steve Asmussen barn, despite the fact that he hasn't raced since November the 3rd. I like the way he won his final start as a three-year-old. He tracked the pace outside, made the smooth bid into 
contention on the turn, and he won by three lengths, drawing away with a 94 buyer speed figure. Like the one strike that, he is lightly raced with a lot of upside potential, he has good tactical speed, he should be in the thick of things turning into the stretch. He's four to one on the morning line. That is more than fair for volatile. I think he might take a little bit more money than that, and if he does, I would ask everyone to demand a little bit of value, because again, this is his first start off of the layoff. Hot Shot Kid is just a really cool horse, so we're going to go back to his most recent race. So it was back in September, but he was going to win the HBPA sprint uh, as the odds-on favorite. He has now won six of seven six of his last seven races he overcame kind of a moderate pace in this race he's just versatile in every aspect he wins on turf he wins on dirt he wins sprinting he wins going long he is a tough tough Minnesota bred who has won 13 of 28 lifetime starts. Now he's going to have to deal with a layoff and historically he needs a race off the bench. Mac Robertson, an excellent trainer, has hot shot kid in here. Another horse with tactical speed who could benefit if the pace is fast. I wouldn't be surprised if the jock just lets these horses go and he sits in mid-pack. Lullaby Bling we talked about briefly at the start. He's expected to be part of this pace but he just did not fire last time out and a non-winner's a three life allowance never got close to the lead was eased walked off the track it just seems like this horse is off form right now and if he's going to be part of a fast pace he might pay the price in the late stages. Let's talk a little bit about J.E.'s hand-me-down. This is an Arkansas bred, the number eight. This is a horse that finished fourth last time out in the no double breeder stakes for Arkansas breds. From a buyer's speed figure standpoint, his numbers pale in comparison to those of the top contenders. I do believe he has the right running style for this race. I just am a bit concerned that he's in a bit steep from a class standpoint. I kind of feel the same way about the number nine, DeRapper, although I will recommend recognize that DeRapper ran well last time out for a $40,000 tag. There was no pace on in that race. That was the race where Pete's play call was up close to that slow pace and sprinted on home. DeRapper, conversely, was 11th in the early portion, and he came rallying to finish second. Not a bad effort for a horse that has quietly won 16 times in his career, and his race two starts back can be excused by the muddy circumstances and the fact that he was up a little bit closer to the pace than he usually wants to be. If you want to look at a representative race, maybe it was three starts back. He just didn't fire against starter 30s. I think this is a tough spot from a class standpoint for the rapper, but he's another horse, a bit dirtied up in form, that might be able to make a late run at a piece. Tut's Revenge is up next, and Tut's Revenge, the number 10, is going to be a big price in this race. Another horse hasn't really done much in his two starts uh, since uh, being returned uh, to the Stewart Barn. 71, 72 buyer speed figures. They're just not going to do it. He was very, very wide last time out, if you want to give him an excuse for that race. And the race before that was his first start off of a long layoff. So he does have some excuses, and he was a stakes winner over Muddy Going at Prairie Meadows last year. That being said, I do believe he's going to need to improve in order to take down this tough field. The number 11 is Nifty, and we'll go back to Nifty's last race, his second start of the form cycle for trainer Larry Jones. This was a race in which he did not break very well, and that's been the story of Nifty's career. He does not break well from the gate. That puts him behind the eight ball, especially in big fields like this where he's just at the mercy of pace and trip. Nifty ran well to finish third in this spot. His buyer speed figures have been solid off the layoff. And we have a formulator fact for trainer Larry Jones. Over the past five years, was Schwartz's aged three-year-olds and up, making their third start back off a layoff between six months to a year in optional claiming dirt sprint raises. Yes, you can get that in-depth in formulator. 42% winners, a $2.84 ROI. Maybe breaking poorly wouldn't be the worst thing for him in this race, considering that the pace will be fast. As you see from the formulator fact, we can expect a good effort third off the layoff, and he has run a 90 buyer speed figure in the past. He's also lightly raced enough that we probably haven't seen his best. I just wish that Nifty was a bit better, leaving the stalls. Completing the body of this overflow field is the number 12 Battle Station. Just couldn't find the excuse for Battle Station last time out. He was part of a moderate pace. He was second best. Uh, he ran an 86 buyer. I wonder if that's the best he can do right now, and he draws a really tough outside post position. Perhaps the jock will take him back, hope to sit in mid-pack, 
hoped to avoid being extremely wide going into the turn, but I just again could not see his excuse from his most recent race, and I believe he'll need to improve off that performance against this field. It's an intriguing race to be sure, the Friday DRF race of the day, the ninth at Oaklawn, and my top selection in here is going to be the number one strike that. I like his upside potential. I do realize that he is stepping up in class, but he is catching his main competition, in my opinion, the number five volatile, coming off a little bit of a layoff, and I think those recency edge might put him over the top. Strike that as my top selection. I'm going one, five, six, and two in the Friday race of the day. It's the ninth at Oaklawn with an approximate post time of 5.09 Central. Best of luck.